Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series and in this video we're going to start talking a bit about migrating services from Cloud Foundry to IAM. Those of you that have been using the IBM Cloud for, for a little while and have created certain services um, under Cloud Foundry will notice that um, we're actually starting to migrate services to IAM and um, I guess um, the, the most common services that we're, we're currently migrating uh, are those under under the Watson banner? So there's the AI services like uh, Watson Assistant, Speech to Text, Text to Speech, etc., etc., and uh, and also Cloudant. So any Cloudant databases um, are also uh, now running under IAM. And um, because of that, what we're doing is we're asking uh, we're asking everybody who has uh, created one of those um, service types um, under Cloud Foundry management to actually migrate those services so that uh, they then run under I am. So uh, the, the, the process of actually doing the migration isn't onerous. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Um, but, uh, but there's lots of good reasons for doing it. The first is that obviously you get um, more granular access to your services. So things like security um, is, is improved. Um, you, can, um, you can obviously um, tie down access to those services uh, quite a lot using I am. So, uh, so that's one reason why, why we're actually asking people to do that. So when you start to migrate services, uh, where well you can actually start to migrate a service when you see um, see this little icon next to the service name in your resources list. So this uh, this icon here, the sort of circle with an arrow in it, means that this service is now ready to be migrated uh, from Cloud Foundry um, to IAM. So whenever you see that, um, you can actually go through the migration process. Now you don't have to migrate the service. Um, I mean, if you, well, you do need to migrate the service if you want to continue to use it. Um, but there is an alternative. Uh, the alternative is obviously to create a brand new service uh, under IAM, and um, and then um, and then migrate your application to actually new use that new service instance. But obviously, what you've then got to do is is uh, get the configuration out of the old service, migrate it to the new service, and um, and make sure that it's all up and running and, and, and working properly. Um, so actually, migrating it is probably easier. And creating a brand new service but if you really don't want to migrate then and, and continue to use the service um, or the service type then then actually recreating the service under IAM is the alternative so um, so but we're, we're going to look at migrating migration so um, so in the next few uh, the next few moments I'm going to show you actually how to migrate services so let's get off to the IBM cloud and um, I'll pick a service and, and show you how to migrate it. okay so here I am in my IBM cloud account at cloud.ibm.com um, so what I'm going to do is go and have a look for my Cloud Foundry services and uh, see which one of those um, I can actually migrate or actually need to be migrated. So I just uh, go into my resources list, um, look under Cloud Foundry services, just uh, just allow that to load. So when the list loads, you can see that I've got all of these these services down here. Now you can see that several of these um, services have have icons against them. So there's a couple of different types. So there's this like a uh, uh, chain one here and then there's this little sort of circle with an arrow and it's a circle with the arrow that you're sort of interested in from a, from a migration point of view. So um, so where you see this um, as I say circle with an arrow icon these are services which you can actually now migrate so if you hover over that you can even see the, the, the migrate this service instance into a resource group. So, so that's what you're looking for, you're looking for these services with this um, circle and an arrow um, icon against them. Now, where you're seeing these uh, these sort of chain links, these are services that have actually already been migrated. So I've already migrated these um, several of these, as you can see. So if I hover over this, you can see that this is a um, this service is now effectively an alias of Conversation One V. So um, so what we've got here is um, this Conversation service is now actually migrated, and it's now actually a, um, a, an IBM Cloud service. So it's not a Cloud Foundry service anymore. Um, so it's actually got an alias and, and, and it's just linked back into this one. So anyway, um, what we're going to do is, is actually go and I'm actually going to show you show you the migration process, which is which is actually really easy. It takes about 30 seconds. So I'm going to choose this one here. So it's conversation E1, and um, all I'm going to do is, is just hover over hover over the little migrate symbol. I'm going to click the migrate link that pops up. And uh, what I then actually get is this um, is is this wizard. So this wizard starts up. So um, you can see here that there's some uh, some information here about identity and access management. 
Um, so it talks about setting fine-grained access with identity and access management, etc., uh, etc. Et now, this, these uh, these bits here are quite important to, to note. So when you migrate a service instance, it becomes a new linked service instance in your resource group. So this is what this is talking about here, these sort of linked services here, so hence the little sort of chain icon. Um, so the original instance becomes an alias. So again, you can see that this is the original instance there. So, uh, so the connections themselves are maintained without interruption. So, um, if you've if you've if you've got this service and you're using it already with a with an application, um, then um, those that that application won't be disrupted. It won't be interrupted, and you can you can still use the the service as is after you've done the migration. There's a slight caveat with that, but um, but for the time being, um, you can carry on using using that service. So. Um, this, uh, this this bold lettering here, um, remember this, this process can't be undone. So once you've actually done this migration, you can't migrate it back to a Cloud Foundry service. Um, it becomes uh, an, an IAM, an Identity and Access Management Managed Service. So let's get going. Let's, uh, let's click Continue. Um, so we just want to make sure that we, uh, we, we have the... Um, the we have the service name there that we, 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 we're expecting to see. So we're actually migrating this conversation E1, uh, which currently is in Dallas and in my Dr. Blue Mix Cloud Foundry organization. So the next thing I need to do is actually select the resource group that I want to migrate it to. Now, hopefully um, you've already decided which resource group that you want to go to. Um, it's, it's probably a good idea if you don't then to have a bit of a think about your, your resource group strategy. And um, you can, you can if, if you want to know more about resource groups and more about IAM in general, um, then obviously there's uh, there's there's my uh, Cloud Foundry and uh, IAM 101 video in this series, which you can go and have a look at. So so it's important to to actually have some kind of resource group strategy. Maybe have your resource groups already set up at this point. However, you can if you need to create a new resource group. So um, so you can click this link here, and um, you can then go through the through the process of actually creating a new resource group. I'd recommend that you already have one set up and the, and the one that you're going to actually test to. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my resource group. So I think I'm going to choose my rules dev resource group. And, um, and again, you get a, so that's so in the uh, button there. So again, you get this little note. So this action can't be undone. So ensure that you've selected the correct resource group. So basically, um, once you've created, once you've selected the resource group and you've pressed migrate, um, then you can't move this service into a different resource group. So make sure that you select the correct resource group the first time. Okay, so let's click the Migrate button. And uh, we just get our, our little um, swirly circle. And uh, that'll probably take around about um, 30 seconds or so, I should think. So we just have that move. There we go. It probably took about 10 seconds really, didn't it? And um, there we go. So we've got this success message. So um, you successfully migrated the service instance to a resource group. So we've got now got uh, uh, conversation E1, which is in the rules dev resource group. So just click done. Uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to refresh this page now. So there you can see I've got conversation E1, and you can now see that that's actually a link service, and it's an alias of conversation E1. So if you just go down to, um, so if you just close that, and we go down to services, um, then you can see here that I've now got a conversation E1 service and you can see that it's in my rules dev resource group. So let's click there. And you can see that um, I'm getting my, uh, so I'm getting the normal page. Noth nothing has changed about the application. The, the, uh, the, uh, the service is exactly the same as it was. Um, and you can, you can actually carry on using it with, with all of your applications. There's no, no, need to, no need to worry. So if you have a look at your service credentials, then you'll see that the credentials that you created, um, they've, they've been refreshed. But if you look at the credentials, then they're the normal sort of Cloud Foundry credentials. So you've got a username, you've got a password. Um, obviously, you don't normally show your credentials off in a public forum, so I'll, I'll be changing those um, as soon as I've created this video. Um, but um, what you may need to do um, in, uh, in, the, in the coming days and weeks um, what you will need to do is actually um, update your application so they actually start to use IAM credentials. So you just need to create a new set of credentials. So just create credentials over there, um, give it a name, 
um, give give it a role. So let's, let's stick with manager for now, and um, and then click add. So we're just creating a new set of credentials, and um, we can then um, have a quick look at those. So you can then see that you've got you've got a, a set of uh, um, IAM enabled credentials, and you can see here that we've got things like the IAM API keys um, and uh, etc. So so when you uh, when you actually change your application so that your application is able to use IAM credentials, um, these are the credentials that you'll actually be using. Okay, so um, hopefully you uh, you got how to migrate the service. You can see that it's pretty simple and actually takes probably uh, no more than thirty seconds really to um, to actually create your uh, to actually migrate um, the service. So I guess the key things to uh, to take away there are probably that you. You should already have your your IM strategy worked out, and um, you know as I say in the video, um, it's always good to have your um, resource groups etc. already set up. So there are some uh, some next steps. So your applications that you've you've got running against those services uh, will continue to work for the time being. So they'll continue to use the the uh, the, the Cloud Foundry uh, credentials. So it's a username and a password. So it will continue to work. However, eventually IBM will be turning off. Um, the, the Cloud Foundry backend for those particular services and at that point um, those services will, will stop working. Now I don't have with me uh, precise dates for when those services will actually stop working. Again you probably need to look in the, uh, the documentation to find that out. So the next step really is that you must update your services, your, your applications um, and the code so it actually stops using the, the Cloud Foundry um, username and password and starts using the IAM API keys um, to connect to services. So you saw uh, a moment ago when I was in the IBM Cloud, you saw me create some new credentials. Uh, you saw there that there was the IAM API keys, and those are the um, and those are the credentials that you then need to start using. And again, there's documentation um, which helps you and shows you how to actually start using those keys and. Uh, and get tokens, etc., so that you can use those keys within your applications. So, last note there: um, remember that the Cloud Foundry access will be switched off. Um, the the actual end date uh, depends on the actual application or the actual service. Um, but my advice would be to to get on with actually um, reconfiguring your code as soon as possible. So, if you're at this point and you're still kind of wondering, well, you know, what is IAM? How do I use it? Um, then again, go back to the videos that, that, that are in this series, uh, which talk about IAM and Cloud Foundry and, and show you a little bit about it. Um, you can also read this document that I created, um, which, is, uh, which is actually up on GitHub. Um, this is sort of an identity and access management for beginners guide. Um, so it helps you uh, sort of understand IAM and how to get going with it. So I hope that's been a useful video. Um, I hope that's shown you and given you some confidence as to um, you know what the migration process actually looks like. It's pretty painless. Um, it does work. Um, lots and lots of customers that I've spoken to um, have gone through this process and uh, quite painlessly. Um, so, um, so hopefully that's given you the, as I say, the confidence to to go ahead and start uh, start migrating your apps. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and um, I look forward to talking to you next time.